Coming to you live from Angkasa Puri, I'm Shuhaid Arifin and this is News at 10. Making the headlines tonight. Formulation of targeted subsidy mechanism in the work. Jualan Lebih Murah Keluarga Malaysia expanded to 613 locations nationwide. A suitable mechanism of action for the implementation of targeted subsidy is being formulated to ensure that the assistance provided by the government will be received by the deserving groups. Prime Minister Dato' Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said various aspects of the mechanism needed to be fine-tuned so that the allocation set aside by the government to help the people of the country did not end up being arbitrarily enjoyed by irresponsible parties, including foreigners. Adakah kita nak beri untuk membeli gula ataupun membeli gandum menggunakan minyak masak, menggunakan kupon? Adakah kupon boleh digunakan ataupun nak menggunakan MyCard untuk membeli dan sebagainya? Jadi ini yang sedang kita perincikan. Dari segi subsidi bersasar, saya pun dah sebut tadi, bermula daripada beberapa kajian dah. Tapi sampai sekarang masih belum boleh dilaksanakan. Mekanisme supaya tidak ada yang tercicir, tidak ada yang tertinggal. The Prime Minister said this in reply to Port Dixon's MP Datuk Suri Anwar Ibrahim, who wanted to know the government's move in addressing the leakage of subsidies which currently being enjoyed by the rich and the foreigners. Datuk Seri Ismail Sabri said the government is also in the midst of combating smuggling activities involving subsidised items such as cooking oil at the industrial level and at the national borders. He said the authorities would also conduct audits on manufacturers and get detailed information on their buyers. Yang paling senang menyeleweng sebagai contoh, repackers, pembungkus minyak. Mereka diberi kebenaran untuk membungkus satu tan minyak masak contohnya. Ke mana minyak masak tu dihantar? Jadi kita akan dapatkan nama detail di kilang-kilang tersebut siapa penerima minyak masak tersebut. To combat smuggling activities at the borders, he said the government had ordered the Royal Malaysia Police and the armed forces to be involved, apart from the enforcement team from the Ministry of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs. The Prime Minister also reiterated that the government has never stopped any subsidy. In fact, he said the government has spent over 77 billion ringgit on subsidies this year, more than double the original allocation of 31 billion ringgit in 2020. He said these subsidies include those for cooking oil, weight, liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, diesel, RON95 and electricity tariffs, among others. Dato Sri Ismail Sabri said the subsidies given by the government had also caused the country's inflation rate to be at 2.8%, the lowest in Southeast Asia. Saya kira paling rendah di Asia Tenggara dan juga mungkin seluruh dunia. Inflasi kita kekal pada 2.8% dan jika subsidi tidak diberikan Inflasi mungkin meningkat kepada 8 hingga 11 peratus. Saya bandingkan dengan negara lain. Negara jiran kita, Thailand, 7.7 peratus inflasi. Singapura, 5.6 peratus. Maknanya kajian berbelanja lebih daripada 77 bilion bagi memastikan rakyat tidak terkesan teruk akibat daripada kenaikan harga barang yang berlaku di seluruh dunia. The government will expand the Jualan Lebih Murah Keluarga Malaysia program to help alleviate rakyat's burden in procuring essential items at cheaper than market price level. The program which will commence next month will involve five ministries under the supervision of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Ministry, KPDNHP. 
The number of locations in which the program will take place have been increased to 613 across Malaysia compared to 222 previously and will focus on necessities such as chicken, egg, cooking oil and rice. Kalau dulunya kekerapannya dua kali sebulan, kali ini sasaran yang dimatlamatkan adalah pada setiap minggu sepanjang bulan. Artinya empat kali sebulan di setiap kawasan daripada 613 kawasan yang telah dipilih. Ini bermakna sebulan saja akan ada lebih kurang 2,400 lokasi uh, premis uh, jualan uh, lebih murah ini dan juga akan berjalan selama kalau lima, sekian lima bulan artinya hampir 12,000 program jualan lebih murah akan dilaksanakan dalam sepanjang tahun 2022 ini. About 140,000 hardcore poor families in Malaysia will be removed from the category in three and a half years through the implementation of various programs to help increase their income. Minister and Prime Minister's Department Economy, Datuk Sri Mustafa Muhammad said, regular and structured monitoring will be carried out every month and intervention measures will also be taken if needed. Datuk Seri Mustafa also said that the Keluarga Malaysia Hardcore Poverty Eradication Program would complement existing programs to address the issue of poverty across all ethnic groups in the Malaysian family. It will be implemented in 1,000 localities with three years and six months with the first phase began on June 2022 involving 80 localities on a pilot basis. Program yang akan dilaksanakan adalah untuk meningkatkan pendapatan yang merangkumi projek-projek pertanian, penternakan, usahawan, pemasaran serta pembangunan minda dan motivasi. Anggaran pendapatan tambahan adalah kira-kira RM300 hingga RM1,000 sebulan. A total of 44,829 household heads are categorised as hardcore poor in 2020 based on the National Poverty Data Bank or EKC, managed by the Implementation Coordination Unit under the Prime Minister's Department. The number has increased to 144,932 household heads as of 30th June 2022 following the adoption of the 2019 Poverty Line Income Methodology as well as the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Local industry players are encouraged to diversify their products to replace goods exported from other countries and fill in vacuum space in the market due to the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Towards this end, Foreign Minister Datuk Sri Saifuddin Abdullah called on local entrepreneurs to fully utilise facilities and assistance provided by the government. Kerajaan komited untuk melonjakkan prestasi perdagang, perdagangan antara bangsa dan pelaburan negara dengan menggalakkan penerokaan pasaran baru bersama negara-negara dagang yang tidak terlibat dalam konflik tersebut. Ini dilaksanakan melalui komitmen konsensi konsesi tarif di bawah 16 perjanjian perdagangan bebas yang berkuat kuasa dan telah diratifikasi oleh Malaysia khususnya dengan negara sumber bagi bahan mentah atau separa mentah atau telah diproses industri pembuatan produk ekspor Malaysia. The government has decided to allow foreign workers from 15 countries to be employed in the manufacturing, construction and service sectors in this country. The decision was reached by the Home Ministry and the Human Resources Ministry during the Foreign Workers Management Joint Committee meeting today. The 15 countries are India, Thailand, Cambodia, Nepal, Myanmar, Laos, Vietnam, Philippines, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Indonesia and Kazakhstan. Bagi memenuhi keperluan industri, mesyuarat pada hari ini juga bersetuju untuk membenarkan pekerja asing digajikan dalam subsektor yang dahulu kita bekukan, iaitu barang lusuh dan subsektor dobi. Ini antara lain kita juga bersetuju untuk membenarkan pekerja asing daripada semua 15 negara sumber untuk bekerja dalam sektor perkilangan, pembinaan dan perkhidmatan. Inilah perkara baru yang telah pun kita uh, teliti dan bersetuju dalam syarat tersebut. 
The ministries have also agreed to study the need for foreign workers, including subsectors whose employment of foreign workers have been frozen. Meanwhile, the Home Minister revealed that discussions between the Malaysian and Indonesian government on the issue of Indonesian worker freeze began today. According to Datuk Seri Hamza, the discussions involved the Immigration Department and Human Resources Ministry and would also look into issues raised by the two parties which may need a little adjustment. Uh, suka untuk saya ingatkan bahawa kita mewakili kerajaan akan sentiasa memastikan pengurusan pekerja asing di Malaysia sentiasa berlandaskan kepada kedaulatan undang-undang negara dan pada masa yang sama menjamin bahawa semua pekerja asing yang berada di Malaysia dilindungi secara saksama mengikuti undang-undang yang ada dalam negara kita. Indonesia has stopped sending its citizens to work in Malaysia effective 13 July after Malaysia's immigration authorities continued using the made online system, SMO, even though both countries agreed to use only the one-channel system OCS through an MOU. The Federal Territories Ministry is proposing the construction of large-scale underground water storage to prevent flash floods in Kuala Lumpur. As Minister Datuk Sri Shaidan Kasim said, the plan is included in the 2022 Kuala Lumpur Flash Flood Mitigation Action Plan that included immediate, short-term, medium-term and long-term plans. Sebagai Tindakan jangka panjang pembinaan terowong sempena air bawah tanah berskala besar di Kuala Lumpur sedang dirancang untuk dibina di bawah jajaran sungai atau jalan raya yang sedia ada. Buat masa ini di BKS sedang melantik jurupunding untuk melaksanakan kajian sesuaian. He added immediate actions such as upgrading scupper drains, silt digging works as well as maintenance works on flood retention ponds, rivers and main drainage ditches were taken at flash flood points. Aside from that, sandbags were placed at low-level areas to stop water from overflowing. Kota Belut's MP Isnaraisa Munira Majlis has been suspended from attending the Dewa Rakyat sitting after she ignored the Speaker's instruction and insisted to have the motion on the claims by Sulu Sultas heirs on Sabah to be debated. The motion became a hot topic of discussions to the extent of causing a war of words between several opposition MPs from Sabah and Speaker Tazri Azhar Azizan Harun and his deputy Datuk Muhammad Rashid Hasnoon. Tansri Azhar then explained the reasons the motions brought forth by Isna Raisa was rejected and said that the emergency motion on the seizure of Petronas assets in Azerbaijan had been approved for debate in one of Dewarayat's previous sitting and had also been explained by Minister of Economic Affairs. Pandangan undang-undang yang mengatakan bahawa ianya semang, apa tu, sememangnya subjudis kerana terdapat satu atau dua proceding yang masih lagi uh, prosid, uh, berjalan sekarang. Uh, aturan mesyuarat amat terang dalam perkara ini dan saya terpaksa memakainya. The heated argument on the matter continued to persist when Datuk Muhammad Rashid took over from Tansri Azhar to preside over the sitting as Isna Raisa kept pressing for the issue to be debated even when the Minister of Energy and Natural Resources, Datuk Sri Takiyuddin Hassan, was about to table the National Forestry Amendment Bill 2022 for second reading. This prompted Datuk Muhammad Rashid to order the sergeant at arms to escort the MP out of the August Hall and hand down a two-day suspension on her. Still to come, men charged for murdering wife and infant son, stay tuned.
A man was charged in the Johor Bahru Magistrates Court today with murdering his wife and infant son at a house in Kampung Baka Batu earlier this month. Muhammad Amin Nazri Muhammad Adam, 24, nodded his head in understanding when the charges against him were read out before Magistrate Muhammad Zulhilmi Ibrahim. However, no confession was recorded. For the first charge, Muhammad Amin Nazri was accused of killing Hajar Nur Shahirin Rosman, 26, a housewife at 11.30 a.m., while in the second charge, he was accused of murdering his two-month-old son, Hans Muhammad Takif, at 11.40 a.m. He was accused to have committed the offences at No. 44, Jalan Dewasa, Kampung Bakar Batu, on 4 July, and both charges were framed under Section 302 of the Penal Code, which carries the death penalty, if convicted. Magistrate Mohamad Zulhilmi also ordered the accused to undergo mental health evaluation at Hospital Permai. The court said 18 August for case re mentioned to obtain post-mortem and chemistry reports. Meanwhile, a lorry driver pleaded not guilty to a charge of reckless driving leading to an accident involving 11 other vehicles at around 9.25 a.m. on 7 July at Johor Causeway. Amir Hassan Jalani, 34, denied committing the offence as he stood before Magistrate Zuhaini Zulkafli. The accused was charged under Section 42, Subsection 1 of the Road Transport Act 1987, which carries a jail term of not more than five years and a fine of 5,000 ringgit to 15,000 ringgit upon conviction. His employer, Hill Auto Parts and Berhad, represented by Yap Shi Min, was also charged with allowing the accused to drive the overloaded heavy vehicle with construction materials totaling 91,240 kg, which was 122.5% more than the lorry stipulated load weight of 41,000 kg. The court allowed bail at 4,000 ringgit and 3,000 ringgit respectively and set 5th September for the next mention. The first group of 298 Malaysian Hajj pilgrims arrived safely at the Kuala Lumpur International Airport KLIA at 9.05 a.m. today by Saudi Airlines flight SV5612 from Jeddah. At the airports to welcome them home were Deputy Minister in the Prime Minister's Department Religious Affairs, Dato Ahmad Marzuk Shari and Tabung Haji TA Chairman Tan Sri Azman Mukhtar. Dato Ahmad Marzuk said 49 Malaysia Airlines and Saudi Airlines flights were provided to bring all 14,305 Malaysian pilgrims home starting yesterday until 13 August in stages according to the schedule set by Tabung Haji. Okay, Alhamdulillah, semuanya selamat. Melainkan setakat ini hanya ada satu seorang saja yang meninggal. Uh, dan ada beberapa orang uh, sedang dirawat di hospital. Uh, kerana uh, pelbagai masalah antaranya heat stroke lah diseminasihatkan uh, jemaah haji yang masih lagi berada di sana supaya menjaga kesihatan banyak minum air dan jangan terdedah kepada panas lah yang paling penting selain daripada kawal jangkitan uh, covid after almost two years of not being able to perform the fifth pillar of Islam, mixed feelings permeate the air in KLIA with some of the pilgrims feeling glad that they are home but at the same time missed the atmosphere at the Holy Land. Perasaannya, uh, orang kata tu sangat gembira dapat berjumpa balik dengan anak, dengan keluarga tapi bila meninggalkan uh, tanah suci itu memang sangat sedih. Alhamdulillah bersyukur sangat saya uh, dan isteri dapat menyelesaikan uh, segala kerja haji dengan sempurna uh, sangat bersyukur sangat-sangatlah segala perjalanan kami di tanah suci diuruskan dengan baik oleh uh, tabung haji uh, semua uh, penginipan semua proses semua berjalan dengan lancar alhamdulillah set to elect a new president that are more coming up in the foreign segment.
India's parliament began voting today for a new president with a female politician from the country's marginalized tribal community, the favorite for the post. Dropadi Murbu from the Sandal tribe has been nominated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's ruling Bharatiya Janata Party for the largely ceremonial position. If elected, she would be India's first tribal president and second female president. The incumbent Ramnan Kovin is the country's second president from the Dalit community, the bottom of the Hindu caste system. Murmu, 64, has held ministerial positions in the state government and been governor of the neighbouring state of Jharkhand. Her main opponent for the presidency is veteran politician Yashwan Sinha, an ex-BJP member and former finance and external affairs minister who has been backed by opposition parties including Congress. India's president is chosen by nearly 5,000 elected members of both houses of parliament and regional legislatures across the country. India's prime minister wields executive power, but the president can send back a few parliamentary bills for reconsideration. The president also plays a guiding role in the process of forming governments. Former Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan again called for an early national election after his party seized control of the State Assembly in Punjab, the country's most populous province. Twenty seats were up for grabs in the Punjab by-election, which was seen as a popularity test for the former international cricket star dismissed by a no-confidence vote in April. His Pakistan Tahariki in South PTI party won 15 with the Pakistan Muslim League and PMLN of current Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif taking four and one going to an independent. Sunday's vote was also seen as a bellwether for national elections that must be held by October next year, although Khan has campaigned across the country for an earlier poll since being dismissed. Khan has drawn thousands to rally since being ousted, giving lengthy speeches claiming the government was imposed on Pakistan by a US-led conspiracy. He also blames the current government for soaring inflation, although most analysts agree Sharif inherited the country's economic woes, which were given some relief last week by an agreement with the International Monetary Fund IMF to resume a rescue package. Next in sports, National Para Badminton Ace clinches 11th title. Stay with us. National Para Badminton Men's Singles Ace Chia Lake Ho clinched his 11th title on the trot after winning the Four Nations Para Badminton International 2022 in Dublin Island yesterday. Top seed Lake Ho, who played in the SU5 physical impairment category, was truly in sensational form as he took only 39 minutes to subdue Japanese second seed Shatsla Tayomai 21-17, 21-16 in the final. Not only that, the reigning Paralympic champion also backed his second title in the tournament, this time with his partner Muhammad Faris Ahmad Azri after topping the group in the men's doubles event. In the first match, Muhammad Faris Lekho outplayed Guillaume Gailly, Matthew Thomas of France, 21-9, 21-10, followed by a second win over Nilesh Balu Gaiwat, Manoj Sarkar of India, 21-6, 21-16. Muhammad Faris Lekho then confirmed the title after they edged their closest rivals, Chirak Bharita, Hardik Makar, also from India, 21-19, 21-17. Despite winning another title in Ireland, the world number one player admitted that he did not want to get carried away with his feet there as he had already set his sights on rocking the 11th ASEAN Para Games APG in Solo, Surakarta, Indonesia from 30th July to 6th August. Malaysia made the made the cut to the Star Sailors League SSL Gold Cup final series in Bahrain, despite a third-place finish in the last race in Switzerland on Sunday. According to a statement from the SSL Malaysia team today, the Monsoon became the second squad from Group 7, Round 5, to qualify for the final series scheduled for November after South Africa. At the end of the four-day race that began last Thursday, Malaysia collected 12 points, while India earned 11 points to finish second and third, respectively. 
South Africa officially booked a ticket to Bahrain on Saturday after collecting three maximum points in four races and thus emerged winners of Group 7 with 19 points. South Africa, or known as Ubuntu, went into Sunday's race without any pressure to record another six points in the last race after ending the race with a time of 46 to 49 seconds. India crossed the finish marker 1.20 seconds behind South Africa to finish in second place, while Malaysia, who are the lowest ranked team in Group 7 at world number 61, were 2 to 39 seconds behind the winner but made their mark to secure the last berth to the final series. The draw to decide the opening groups for the final will follow the date to be announced shortly. Other teams who have qualified comprise Ukraine, Thailand, Oman, Cuba, Peru, Chile, Portugal, Czech Republic, Slovenia, Lithuania, Estonia, Ireland, Antigua, Barbuda and Tahiti. Jamaica's Shelley Ann Fraser Price made history as she backed her fifth World 100 meter title on Sunday as Team USA claimed four other crowns on offer in Oregon. Fraser Price, a 35 year old mother, led from gun to tape in a consumer display of sprinting that valued her age. The Jamaican who previously won the Blue Ribbon event in 2009, 2013, 2015 and 2019 won in the championship records of 10.67 seconds. Sharika Jackson took silver in a personal best of 10.73 seconds with four-time Olympic sprint champion Elaine thompson Hera claiming bronze. It was the first time a nation had swept the medals in the women's 100 meter at the Worlds and came just a day after Fred Curley led a US sweep of the men's 100 meter. In a startling day of results for Team USA on home soil, Ryan Krauser led another American clean sweep, this time in the shot put alongside Joe Kovacs and Josh Awatund. There were also one two finishers in the women's pole vault thanks to Katie Negert and Sandy Morris and the 110 meter hurdles as Grant Halloway retained his title ahead of teammate Trey Cunningham. Manchester United have agreed a deal with AX Amsterdam to sign defender Lissandro Martinez for an initial fee of 57.37 million euros with 10 million euros of potential add-ons included both clubs confirmed yesterday. The deal is subject to a medical examination and a visa being granted with completion expected in the coming days. The length of the contract was not announced, but a source with knowledge of the agreement said Martinez would sign a five-year deal with the Premier League club with an option for a further 12 months included. The 24-year-old, who can also play in midfield, will be manager Eric Ten Hag's third signing following the arrivals of Dutch left-back Tyrell Malasia and Denmark midfielder Christian Eriksen. Ten Hag coached Martinez for three seasons at AX after the player moved to the Netherlands from Argentine side Defense Justia in May 2019. Martinez made 118 appearances for the Dutch club. A new defender was seen as priority for United after their struggles at the back last season. They conceded 57 goals last term, the most among the Premier League's top six, and 31 more than champions Manchester City. They opened a newly campaign at home to Brighton and Hove Albion on 7th August. Alright, so that ends tonight's news at 10. In our top story, formulation of targeted subsidy mechanism in the work. Join us for update at 12.30pm tomorrow. Till then, I'm Shuhaida Arifain. Stay tuned to Salurambita RTM. Have a pleasant evening.